Welcome to Akuma America. I'm Tim Thiessen, Vice President of Sales and Marketing. Today I have with me Chris Davala from our Applications Engineering Group. And we're going to review the Armroid, a form of automation from Akuma, with you today. And we'll be doing that. It's on the LB3000. It's our flagship two-axis lathe. Chris, let's get started. Uh, the first thing I noticed when I walked up to this machine is with automation, I usually expect to see a fence around the machine. Sure, absolutely. Typically, you would have a third-party integrator that would do all your automation for you. So a third party that would come set up your robot, set up your safety fence, all those sort of things. Because this is an Akuma built-in manufactured robot, we don't have a need for that. So in this case, we have our stalker, which lives right in front of the machine. So between the stalker and the robot that's inside the machine tool, everything's enclosed in one nice, tight, compact little environment. So we don't have the need for all that additional wasted space yeah. by having a safety fence. Yeah, and that's got to save in some installation time, a cost, and other things. I also notice when things are fenced out like that, that a lot of times there's coolant and chips on the floor. This looks like a pretty neat, compact system. Absolutely, because we're never really taking the part outside of the machine environment with the robot. There's no chips falling out of the machine. There's no coolant dripping on the floor. All of it stays contained inside this nice little package. So this is our four pitch stalker, we call it. So you can open the door right there. You see we have four different levels of our stalker. You can see maybe we have an inch and a half or so diameter shaft. So we'll probably fit about six or seven of those on each okay. shelf. The robot will grab them off the one shelf load them into the machine. After it's done, it'll put them on the finished parts shelf. We have some sensors to let the robot know when the shelf is either empty or full. Well, it looks a whole lot better than having a parts catcher hanging off the front of the Absolutely. machine. Absolutely. Your, your parts aren't getting dropped on each other. They're not banging into each other when they get dumped in the bucket. You know, it allows a nice smooth transition of part unloading where you don't want your high value parts just banging against each other sure. sometimes. Now, having said that, it's a fairly big unit. Can I see you move it into Absolutely. position? Absolutely. So, Literally two fingers, you oh, can wow. slide this guy over. Has some nice rollers on the bottom. Once it's in position, we want to make sure it stays locked in position. Great. Well, let's take a look inside. Slide the machine. it right back open, and that's that's how hard it is. So, what what's are the main components of the armroid in the machine? So, inside the machine, we have the robot, which lives in the machine tool all the time. Typically, you would see a robot that's outside the machine tool. This is basically the first of its kind, where the robot is in the environment all the time. Puma manufactures and builds those robots, so we control the entire process start to finish. Yep. And in the back, we also have a drawer that will slide out that has some different end effectors, which are the end pieces that go on the robot. Okay, so I have more than just the one set of grippers that's in the, in the armor. Sure, right so now. we have a set of grippers, and we also have a few different accessories depending on what your process is that might be beneficial for you. Can we take a look at those? Absolutely. So one M code allows the drawer to open, one M code allows the drawer to shut. Once it's open, can open this and take a look. Okay, so it's like a storage cabinet, yep. and I see three positions, and I'm assuming the one position is already in the armroid. That's right. Uh, and it's a gripper, so what are these other two? So the one you see on the right here is a coolant nozzle. Okay. Uh, so we can use that coolant nozzle to spray at our tool, so the robot will swing around to this side, opposite of our cutting tool, so we can use that for chip control during the cutting process itself. We can also, program the robot to move that nozzle around and wash down the inside of our machine tool. So wow. chip control is a very big part of automation. We have to make sure, sure we have chips under control all the time. So if we're not worried about chips on the workpiece itself, we're worried about them on our cutting tool, worried about it getting packed up inside of our enclosure somewhere. So yep. this allows us to program a path to wash down the in environment inside to keep chips under control. Yep. Now the other one looks like either a steady rest or a steady roller. What's, what is that? Sure, so that's a roller that we can use as a work support. Okay. In some cases with a long slender shaft, you would want to have a steady rest. In this case, we don't have provisions to mount that, but because this is dedicated for shaft work, we know that we might have shafts that are unfavorable length diameter ratios, things like that, that we need some extra support. So we can use the robot while it's not busy changing parts to help support our workpiece and make a better quality part. So it's really a lot more than just a robot loading and unloading Absolutely. Parts. If you only want to have the gripper, you can certainly do that, but you also have the option to have some other accessories as well. This particular armroid is uh, for shaft work only. We also have another type of armroid that's for chucker work. So that gripper would be more of like a free jaw chuck where you would load parts that would just get put in the chuck, not so much a shaft, a little bit different style conveyor where instead of having four shelves, we would have more of a lift up style conveyor like we would on our OGL series. 
So a few different options, you know, to suit just about anything you need. That's great. Well, I guess the next big question when it comes to automation is how you program it. Sure. And that always is challenging, right? Because somebody's got to be able to program a machine and now they maybe have to new, learn a new language for the robot. So Absolutely. I hear this one's pretty easy to program. Can you tell me a little bit about it? Yeah, it sure is. So just like you would create some NC programs, right? Here we have our NC program. Here we have our robot program creation. We just tell it we want a new file. And basically you have a menu that walks you through the entire process. So do you want to unload parts, load parts? Do you want to do a part flip, work support, wash down? All those things are just a simple menu. Then you just work from the top down, put in some variables, and it guides you through the process. Yeah, kind of like a conversation. Absolutely. Yeah, conversational, yeah. So in addition to creating the program, it also kind of appears that it's, it's able to you know, avoid crashes and stuff too, right? Sure, absolutely. So our collision avoidance system has been around for many years, standard on some of our higher tech products. In this case, you have a high dollar robot that you don't want to have anything happen to. So we use our collision avoidance to monitor the robot motion and everything inside. So in this case, we're giving it some commands on what we want it to do, but the actual robot motion path will be automatically generated for you. Okay. So there'll be some points that we teach depending on what size stalker we have. So we'll teach some load and unload points inside the stalker yep. and also some load and unload points for the work holding in the chuck. And other than that, the actual motion path will be created. You mentioned somebody needs to know how to program a machine tool, then they now they program a robot as well. So that takes some of the guesswork and, and some of that added pressure off the operator. Okay. So if Akuma is making the machine and the robot, then it knows the solid model of the turret. Absolutely. The spindle, the robot. I just have to input my unique information about my work holding or tail sure. stock. Just like our standard collision avoidance, you would input your work holding. Are we going to use the tail stock or not? What is our workpiece size and length? Any tooling that you mount to the turret, things like that. The machine tool itself, we already know where all those components live, so we can protect you at all times. So just to show you how truly compact this system is, right here you have the robot controller that handles all the motion control for the armroid, and it fits right inside of our standard electrical cabinet, so there's no accessories outside the footprint of the actual standard machine. Well, we appreciate you taking the time to join us for this representation of the armroid. And we look forward to our next video, right? Stand right? Absolutely. All right, thanks for joining us.